Being a teenager is a tough gig, but how much harder must it be for thousands of adolescent girls who stumble into motherhood each year? While their friends party and gossip, these young mums, really just kids themselves, only want a good night's sleep. It's no wonder so many of them drop out and end up squandering their best years on welfare. But there is another way. It's not easy, far from it. Still, you don't get too many second chances at life. Ready? One, two, three. There you go. One little bub. Not so little anymore. No, no, he's not. Corbin. What age did you have the bub? I had him 10 days before I was 16. That's young. Yeah, it was. So I pretty much had um, child services breathing down my neck for 10 days. Were you worried that he was going to be taken off you? No, because I knew that I was a good mum and they couldn't take him away from me even if they tried. You can't slide down there now. Uh, yeah, let's get it all off. While most 16-year-old girls might obsess about fashion or Facebook, Kat Smout's passion comes in one small package, her baby son, Corbin. So how does he go on the train? It's pretty ridiculous, actually. Kat was just a child herself when she left home at 14. A year later, she was pregnant. It wasn't at all planned, but there was no thought in my mind that I was going to get rid of it or, or not keep it or, you know, just, I knew that I had to. So, and I wanted to actually. I was excited from, you know, from the word go. From an early age, our kids are educated about safe sex and contraception. What do you like in Jaden? Yet, thousands of Australian teenagers still fall pregnant each year. Mwah, love you. And even in these tolerant times, they soon learn the stigma of being the schoolyard scandal. Drink. Like many teen mums, Kat's family rejected her and Corbin. Former friends trashed her reputation. Mom? Mom? Did it hurt when they said those things? It didn't because I'd had so many hurtful things said by my parents. It was, I was just a bit numb, you know, I'm just used to it. So I could, I'd deal with that every day. So I didn't really mind what they were saying because that's in their own mind. You know, half of them are pregnant now. So honestly, the joke's on them. Every human being needs love, and many of these girls have missed out on that. So I th they have these babies because it gives them something to love, and something that will give them love back unconditionally. So this is our toddler mm -hmm. um, crash, and we're doing play group at the moment. This is part of their curriculum. Part of their curriculum. Time and again, high school teacher Jackie Dean watched teen mums forced to abandon their education, and with it, their hopes and dreams for the future. Does anybody know how old you have to be before the police can charge you with a crime? So three years ago, with the help of Queensland Education, Jackie created a program at Burnside High in Nambour, where motherhood and matriculation mix. 14 and 17, but right earning or learning. Is she a little bit like mum? Very much. While the girls keep up with their studies and learn practical parenting skills, are we yeah. thinking teeth or what are we I thinking? think so. Their babies are right next door in the nursery. Where's mummy? They just want to be here. And it's not because it's easy street, it's because it is a safe environment for them. And everybody here is about improving their lives and the lives of their kids. So for this lesson we're going to simulate the baby actually choking on a Lego block. That's the course started with just 12 girls. Now Jackie has 45 students. And then we repeat that. Still not coming out? And a growing waiting list. Kat is so dedicated, three times a week she and Corbin make the 280 kilometre round trip from her home in Ipswich to school in Nambour on the Sunshine Coast. <laughs> like, they're the hardest list to watch. I've got to leave on the train at 4.30 in the morning, so anything after that and I'm going to be late. So what time do you get home? Five or six is probably the earliest that I'll get home if I leave at two from Nambour. With a toddler? With a toddler. Are you nuts? <laughs> I think so at the moment. 
You know, inside these four walls, for the mums and babies, they're very much protected from an outside world that can be incredibly harsh. This is a no-judgment zone. And for the mums, that's incredibly important. They crave it. They deserve it. They don't want their kids to go through what they have been through. And in some cases, trust me, that is horrific. How do people treat someone like you, someone young and pregnant? Everybody that I spoke to, apart from my parents, had a really negative view. Y your life's over. You know, you're pregnant so young, you've got so much life to live yet. Every day, 20-year-old Tara Ann hears the same judgmental comments as most teenage mothers. But listen to her story and you realise not everyone fits the stereotype. We went out to this party and while I was there, we did normal things that teenagers do at parties, smoking, drinking, talking. Um, but during that time, I believe that my drink was spiked um, because I was so out of control and I knew that I hadn't I had that much to drink. Um, then I started to black out. The next thing I remember was being in a car and being raped. And as a result of that rape, I fell pregnant. Morning. It's taken Tara Ann a long time to come to terms with what happened and to share her story. Hi. So see you later, alligator. But in spite of everything, including her tender years, her powerful maternal bond never wavered. There'll be people watching you who just won't be able to comprehend that you kept the child. I know. I live with that decision every day and I look at how beautiful he is. He's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Is it hard for you not to think of where he'd come from? No, I look at him and I know that he's a part of me and that if I cherish him as much as I can and I love him and I do the right things, that he'll grow up to be a good man. Have a good day at school. Here at Burnside, Tara Ann is thriving. One more bag. <laughs> Many of the girls hope to earn a Certificate 3, which enables them to work in childcare centres. Uh, 20 to 25 minutes. But the curriculum is pretty standard, with subjects ranging from cooking... 3, B squared... ...to algebra. Number 7. B, 2, D? Yeah. No, no, next one. Next, next one, one is, oh, yeah. OK. And in that department, Tara Ann is way ahead of me. This is giving me cold and sweats and horrible flashbacks. <laughs> hey? It's not that bad. You find it fairly easy though, yeah? Yeah, kind of. So that's three times B. People times talk about outcomes and measuring outcomes and whatever. How do you measure that a mother now loves their child? Or that a mother now knows how to interact with their child? How, how do you measure that? That's what makes this program so important and so special. Do you love these kids? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It's terrible. I hate it when they leave. <laughs> I, I, I cry like they're my own children leaving home. But it, it's so rewarding to see them ready to fly. So Jess, this is your afternoons? Yeah, pretty much. 23-year-old <laughs> Jess Lanigan is one of those who's taken flight. Since completing the course, she's gone on to study for a teaching degree while raising three-year-old Mahalia and five-year-old Kalaya. I generally play, start, start dinner, wash uniforms, homework, bath, bed, <laughs> study, <must> be exhausted. <laughs> die. Hey? But even for you to be going to university with two young kids is quite the achievement. Definitely, I think. I've, I've had a few friends that didn't have kids and we all kind of started at the same time and a couple of them have already dropped out like, oh, it was too hard and I was kind of like, hard, you live at home. <laughs> all you have to do is go to uni every day and come home. You have until the following Friday at 12 noon. Jess is the first in her family to go to university. Despite her early pregnancy, she's achieving a goal she never thought possible to free her children from the cycle of welfare dependence. It's not so much us that it's freeing from it, it's our kids as well, because we're going to be in a position to provide for them. So then they're going to have more options to sustain themselves. That kind of breaks the welfare mm. cycle, I think, anyway. Did you give Miss Ford your homework? <laughs> OK. 
It's priceless. Look at Jess. You know, she has made an amazing transition from when she first came and joined me in the program to what she's now, what she's achieving. And that is what makes it all worthwhile. And I did not want that to happen to me. And I if young motherhood is a hard road now, Bernadette Black is here to remind the girls that 17 years ago, when she fell pregnant, it was even more taboo. How did your father react when he found out you were pregnant? On the day that I told him, he went out into the middle of the main road. We lived on a main road and he shouted to the whole of our suburb that his 16-year-old daughter had had sex and now she was pregnant. Shouted so it out. Shouted it out. Like, my 16-year-old daughter's had sex and now she's pregnant. Louder, 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 louder. All of the neighbours heard it. Ready, set, go. <sighs> But just look at the cause of all that shouting today. Bernadette's son, Damien Oliver, is a confident young man. <laughs> Two more children with husband Steve completed the family. Damien, tell me, how proud of mummy? I can't, I can't explain how proud I am. I mean, and if Bernadette needed further proof of how far she'd come from a teenage mum, it came just two years ago when she was named Bernardo's Mother of the Year. And I think she's done, you know, such a great job, not with just me, but my siblings as well, and yeah, so... There is hope out there. Yeah, there definitely is, definitely. Well, you're a testament to that. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully, anyway. Thanks to Burnside High, Jess Lanigan is looking forward to the same kind of bright future. But knowing the pitfalls, Jess is a little daunted at the prospect of guiding her own two daughters through the perils of teenage pregnancy. Okay. Terrified, absolutely terrified of teenage daughters. That is called karma. No, no. <laughs> I don't want karma. What advice will you give them in their teenage years? Kind of in two minds. Like, I want to be... I want them to feel comfortable talking to me, but at the same time, I feel this really big need to, like, ship them off to a convent. Like... <laughs> It's worth remembering that all these girls could be staying home and collecting welfare. It's all happening out here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a bit chaotic. But it's Jackie like Dean is showing them, and the rest of us, that one fateful mistake doesn't have to mean a lifetime of regret. Where do you see it all heading? Look, my ideal is that we set up all over the country all programs like this where girls can access not just education, but the whole deal. The one-stop shop that we can offer here. Turn it into something big. Turn it into something big, but wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So you got any homework for STEM? No, but I have to go tomorrow and get a whole heap of books off of As for Kat, she's completely embraced her role as a mum. So crack might have to be next year. So much so, she and her partner Glenn are expecting their second baby. Yep. In childcare? Yeah, of course. But that doesn't mean she'll be leaving school. So one child at 15, the second child at 18? Yep. You can't possibly make it. I absolutely hate people that say that I can't do it. There's just nothing to it. I know that I can, I can create a family for myself at this age and I have to remind myself of my age sometimes. So when someone says to you, can't, you can't make it, what do you say? A few words and then I would, I would actually say that I can and, you know, just watch me. Just watch me. Yep. She was a powerhouse of a person. She was energy. Everyone's friend. She had a smile. She could walk into a room and light it up. Danielle wanted love. It was the first boyfriend we had ever met. They just seemed to click. But after meeting on a dating app, this coward took her life. Was this a murder waiting to happen? I believe so. Tonight on 60 Minutes. Ashley Gaddy was a serial domestic violence offender. Five women had taken out apprehended violence orders against him. The shameful issue gripping Australia. If he'd been not out in bail, Danny would be alive today. That's next on 60 Minutes.